Yes, and uh, and there's an old saying: the motorcycle guys that used to try and outrun those, you can't outrun Motorola. Of course, Motorola standing for the radio companies uh, that makes these radios that contacts with everybody else, and you're not going to be able to do it. So his best bet right now before agitation gets worse is to just pull over and put an end to this right now before anybody really gets hurt. Yeah, making now another left turn. Uh, again, he's going through a number of different uh, residential areas in the northern part of Arlington. So I think we are still uh, to the north of uh, Interstate 30 now. This chase has been going on for since 1.45, at least that we've been watching it, so probably a little earlier than that. For those of you just joining us, this all started with... Uh, with apparently just a, a typical stop, but now we have heard from our, our uh, traffic stop. We've heard from our Lauren Zakalik that uh, this person may have had a much more extensive past involvement with police, with law enforcement, with the justice system. Uh, there is some allegation that this person may have been involved in drugs as a drug dealer, and that that may be some of the reason, some of the motivation for their uh, Gary hoping to uh, to go ahead and get away from police. But uh, they're just not going to let that happen. Yeah, and again, if it's the uh, oh, if the strikes if the strike three uh, policy is still in effect, the third strike, and you go away for a very long time, he's not going to want to do that, and he's going to do what he can. He's got nothing to lose if that's his mentality, just to get out and get away, and think thinking he can get away. But uh, it's just it's not going to happen. I hope. Okay. This is southbound Collins now, headed toward uh, I-30 right now. The hope I suspect that this, that this individual has is that they'll find some way to get back on the freeway. Now, I have to tell you, having lived in this area, uh, it is not a direct... Uh, he may make a right turn coming up here, but uh, there's no direct exit from uh, Collins on to 30. It, you have to know the general area to have some understanding of where you need to go to get on to 30. So let's just see how familiar he is with Arlington as he continues on. That's a car, uh, car dealership right there. This is probably Lamar coming up. There used to be, there's a Whole Foods up on the north top of your screen right there, uh, if I remember right. There's a Wells Fargo bank on his right side. He'll continue through the, internet, uh, through the intersection. As he continues to go south, uh, if he knew what he was doing, uh, he would know that he has to turn either where he just was or the place he's about to be. There's a guitar center on the right-hand side. You, if he knew where he was going, he would know that at this point he has to make a right-hand turn if he, his intention is to get uh, to uh, I-30. So he's made that right-hand turn, perhaps seen a sign, uh, Gary. Uh, and Now, uh, again, even this road will not take you directly to uh, Interstate 30. What it's going to do is take him, I think, uh, along Lamar uh, on to Cooper Street. So right now he's westbound, Gary, if I'm, if I'm correct, westbound toward Cooper. On the right-hand side should be some kind of a golf course. Uh-oh. Well, now he's moved off of the main road, so this should be interesting to see. Gary, uh, you can see where he's headed. I don't know what is through there. looks like he's trying to get... Uh this, this is an empty parking lot, a construction strip zone. Officers are moving in really soon. They really wanted to catch him inside there, but now uh, he's making his way back to the road. And he actually uh, will probably get out of this um, of this parking area and back onto the road again, which uh, is really disappointing because it's uh, traffic is picking up, the speed is picking up, yeah. and uh, he's southbound it, now on, on uh, that. That would be southbound on Collins, uh, it, Gary. If I'm correct, what you'll see up ahead of him on the left-hand side, a few blocks down, should be um, should, should be the, the stadium. Uh, and on the right-hand side, of course, all kinds of traffic. But again, this is the busiest tra This is the busiest area in terms of retail in ter for Arlington, I think, in North Arlington, right, Gary? Yeah, it's very crowded here. Okay, you'll see them cutting up across the sidewalk over a restaurant. Uh, I'm speaking just a little bit ahead here, uh, but um, it is a very, uh, very busy section of of town, a lot of traffic, not a lot of pedestrian traffic, thankfully. But you'll see him cutting across here. Look at that, cutting across onto the streets. Again, trying to shorten his route and trying to lose these guys, but back out uh, in this area where there's a lot of shopping malls uh, and, and parking areas. Yeah, he's going to wrap back around slightly to the left. He's going to come up to a traffic light in, the, on the, uh, in just a second. Uh, my fear is that on his left-hand side, maybe a half mile down, there is a rather large uh, school that we have to make sure that uh, he's not aware of. But so there he goes, uh, trying to get around the traffic. There's the traffic light. M to the left would be all kinds of... Now, now he's really headed back to the north, and what he doesn't know is he's going to swing back around 
uh, to Collins Street, if I remember correctly. This road uh, wraps one way, I think, then another. Gary, you tell me what you're seeing. Uh, what I'm seeing him now is going the wrong way down a street. Uh, this is just increased dramatically in danger. One way okay. down what appears to be this is the ramp to get on to get off That's, on one of these yeah. streets here. It's one way, and he's going the wrong way. And uh, yeah, this here is, comes a. Go ahead, Gary. I think this is very dangerous. He's on, he's on the ramp to go the wrong way to the service road, getting off of uh, getting off of 20. He may realize that, but he, he's going to have to turn around now. Well, there he goes. So he's getting on now, Gary. He's going to be going eastbound on on 30. Is that correct? Yes, eastbound on 30. He almost got hit by that red car, but uh, now he's back on I-30 eastbound picking up the speed yet again and uh, trying to get back on the highway, and he probably will be successful to that here just uh, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, he has found his way now back onto the freeway. In just a second, he'll be going past there. What you'll see in coming up in just a couple of minutes, six flags will be on your right-hand side, uh, 360, uh, and then, of course, uh, headed after that, of course, into Grand 161, and then, of course, into Grand Prairie. Uh, but it uh, looks like he has managed to find his way uh, back onto the the freeway police officers of course trying to to catch up with him right now yeah he's uh, actually lost quite a few of them uh, he's still got one or two behind him but he lost a whole bunch of them and uh, but they're still got him in view and obviously the helicopter does and they're right next to him on the the road they're just waiting for that road to merge and uh, allow them to get right back on but now they have the the chore of breaking up this traffic again and keeping people away from from this event and that's that it's almost like they have to start all over again and that again more strain on Fort Worth's resources this is a very difficult situation for them. Yeah. yeah he's about to pass two major roads that 360 will be coming up in just a second so 360 and I-30 is on I-30 eastbound headed toward Dallas so that uh, where he is right there that uh, I cannot remember the name of that road uh, but it's also a, a main exit, but ballpark way also coming up uh, r relatively quickly. But after that will be 360, and then shortly after that will be, I think, uh, 161, if we're heading north on 161. But right How now, again, on, on I-30, uh, looks like he's headed, on the, he's headed to the east, fuel. Uh, headed toward the Grand Prairie right now. Police officers uh, again behind him uh, in this pursuit that's been going on now since uh, since about 1:45 that we have been following all of this. So the best part of the of the uh, of the afternoon they've been following him. We initially heard that this was a simple traffic stop, but now we've learned based upon sources that Lawrence Akalik has uh, that this individual may have some extensive uh, involvement uh, with the justice system in terms of having gone to prison for 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 drugs. May also be a suspect in terms of being a drug dealer right now. Uh, and is trying to elude police because of the situation uh, that he's experienced in the past. Tanya Eiser joins us now. She's got some more information. Tanya, again, has extensive uh, background with regard to dealing with law enforcement. Go. I understand that uh, he's going to wreck out. Watch this picture as we come up. That's a police unit you see there. Let's see what happens as he pushes to the right. There we go. There's the bumper. Yep, they're getting him stopped. That was a, that was a SWAT so vehicle. That's the, yeah, you see four SWAT vehicle, on the, the side of it. The police using the SWAT vehicle. Looks like a person trying to they get out of the back right there. They call that a bearcat, apparently. Police officers coming out, both sides of them. Oh, sorry. Police officers coming out, both sides of him right now. Some smoke coming from the, the, the white car of the suspect. Officers trying to come into the, to the inside. Again, this trace has come to a close. Asking him to get out, and it looks like he either cannot or will not. You see them poking at the window. They'll be coming around to the other side uh, and momentarily. This is a SWAT unit that's come around that's, pulled, that's brought this to a close. Police officers, again, there he is trying to crawl out the window right now. Police officers come around, grab him, pull him out of the vehicle, bringing him to the ground now. Officers look like they're securing the situation. They don't seem to be concerned about anyone else being inside. They brought the suspect out of the vehicle. It has wrecked. Uh, so it looks like the officers are okay. The suspect now in custody. Police officers securing the scene. Tanya uh, Iser joins me. Tanya, did you get a chance to see all that? Well, I'm having some difficult. Oh, I have watching it right now obviously they they use one of their SWAT vehicles to bring this thing to an end uh, talking to law enforcement folks what they're saying 
Obviously, this became a life safety issue to allow this continue, and that's why they got the SWAT vehicle involved and, and ended this thing in the way they did. We'll, be, we'll have more on the four about this, obviously. Tanya, Tanya, I'm not, I cannot, I cannot. Uh, we'll be taying a break now, and uh, like uh, obviously we'll have more on the four o'clock show. Into custody. Let's take a short break. Uh, News at four starts in just a moment.